There we go. Bob yeah, Bolch. How you doing? I, I am well. Uh, sir, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Oh, you too, man. I know you are. Uh, I know you are very busy, so I appreciate you taking the time. And I'm sorry about the other day. I got stuck with my kid. It was a whole thing. Uh, dude, I, I mean, I, I have a kid. I know how that goes, so it's yeah. totally fun. No, I appreciate yeah. it. Um, I want to talk about, obviously, uh, Big Scenic Nowhere, The Long Morrow, and, and, no, and right on. everything going on. A little bit about, I want to talk a little bit about Fu Manchu, and then I just want to talk about kind of guitar nerd stuff, too. Because, sure. Because I'm, I'm not a guitar that. nerd, but... but you're, not, you're not a guitar nerd? I'm not, but I deeply admire uh, the nerdery. Well, so. we'll change that by the end of the interview. You should be pretty, pretty nerdy, <laughs> so that's good. All right, good. Um, so the long morrow, tell me about how the project came about, how you guys de kind of decided to, to go with one song at a time instead of just putting out a record. Yeah. Uh, well, we, we got together in November of 2019 mm -hmm. for like three days out in Joshua tree. I mean, Tony Reed on bass and, and Bill on drums and Gary on guitar. So Bill and Gary from Yachty Man, yep. Tony Reed from Moss Generator. And uh, yeah, just kind of jammed out for three days. And then uh, Chris Goss came out for, for the last day. And so there's like, from Esther's reality, and that there's all yeah. kinds of material to kind of sift through. You know, there's, there's hours and hours of stuff. And, and um, I have it all pretty well labeled and organized and things of that nature. But, but we, we released um, Lavender Blues from that session last year. Uh, that's just P. And then we're working on the full length right now from that same session. So this is total nerd stuff, but on Lavender Blues, there's, there's like the song Lavender Blues and there's another song called, um, <laughs> I should probably know it. That's, uh, <laughs> uh, it's uh, La um, Labyrinth Spade that has the guitar player from Voivod. Yep. So those two songs, one's really mellow, one's like really aggressive and there's a lot of shredding guitar. Those are actually the same song. So on this record, you get to hear a song called Lavender Blue. It's a different spelling that, that it's, you get to hear how those two parts interact, which is really nerdy. It's like a prequel okay. to what's going to come on this one. So what we did on those songs is we did two takes. It was like part A, part B, part A, part B, and then jam out part B and go crazy. And then do it again, part A, part B, part A, part B, part A jam out part a and go crazy so nice. what you're hearing on lavender blues is the jam out of part a and the jam out of part b now okay. you get to hear how they interact and it's actually like a song so it's it's pretty cool i don't i can't really think i mean maybe brush did it like that at one, for one record like hemispheres i don't know but that, it's it's super nerdy to be like oh this is you've already kind of heard it but not really now you get right. to hear the actual fleshed out song you know so that's cool but yeah so i've been going through all that and then there's there's going to be five songs two of which we've already released and that well actually six songs the sixth song will be the long morrow which will take up side one so that like when we sat down the first day in in, in that session it was like oh yeah well, let's let's try something and like literally within 30 seconds i have time within 30 seconds we're in a groove and we don't come out of it for like 30 minutes like i mean nice. it, we go to all yeah. these different places and the song changes and all this shit and then like the end of it we all kind of look up and you can hear tony go it's, like, <laughs> it's really good it's cool <laughs> so that was the first time we've ever played together and that that set up the whole vibe of the next you know that day and the next two days so i've gone back in and and, and looked at those that jam and been like oh there's actually parts in this jam that could be a little bit more structured or it's like a big ice sculpture you just start chipping away at shit yeah. You know, so I, we, I left with this huge block and now I've been at home for the pandemic and everything, just chipping away at my shit, organizing and, and, you know, talking to Tony almost every day, like, oh, let's edit here and let's move this part here. And so it's it sounds like a jam, but it sounds like a really cohesive jam that goes to all these different places, which will be really cool. And that's what, that's the tune that we're going to fill up with guests. And I've got two people that I just emailed today that I can't believe are going to be part of it. And I don't want to spoil it. Oh, come on. One of them. What's that? I said, oh, come on. I mean, if you want me to tell you, I will. <laughs> so yeah. I, I just emailed it to um, Alan Johannes, who, who was on um, Vision Beyond Horizon, who's insanely talented. Yes, he is. Um, and and uh, somebody way outside of our scene, but I have a lot of respect for, 
uh, Reeves Gabriel from uh, The Cure and David Bowie's band. So, oh, wow. yeah. So, and okay. he's a reverend guitar guy too. Um, yeah, I just was like, oh shit, I wonder if he'd be down to do it. And within an hour, he emailed me back. He's like, I love Fu Manchu. I love your guitar and uh, let's fucking do it. I'm down. So then we started emailing about like how to do it. Hopefully it works out. Now that I spilled, you know, <laughs> I spilled it, but it right, it's official cool. now. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Even, yeah. even if it doesn't, there's a, there's a list of people that I, I've sent it to that I want to, those are just the people I sent it to today. So right. we'll see, we'll see what, what comes of it, but I figured invite more people to the party and, and whatever happens happens, which you know, is kind Absolutely. of what we did on the, on Vision Beyond Horizon and it worked out pretty good. So. Yeah. I mean, yes. Uh, <laughs> Well, sculpting, thinking of, of sort of sculpting things out of, out of those jams, then that's got to be, that's got to be a, a, an interesting process for you too. sort of finding, not only finding those parts, but then thinking about taking one piece of a jam and saying, okay, maybe this could be this verse, but also with this person, right? Like yeah. How so how I, much are you actually hearing in your head as you're doing that versus sort of improvising structure? Well, I, 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 improvising is just, that's in the moment. I mean, we just kind of go for it. And then at right, the end, it's I, like just a jigsaw puzzle. You just throw it down on the ground. Yeah, but yeah, okay. I don't really, I'm just giving it to people to go wherever you guys want to add stuff. I'm cool with it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, Tony Reed's the singer of the band. So he gets the first crack at everything, but you know, the, the band's kind of founded on the idea of inviting guests and stuff into the mix. So, um, yeah, we'll see what people add. I, I don't, I don't even know where it's going to go at this point. I have it like, I'm a total fucking nerd with like notebooks and mapping it out and timestamps and key changes. And if you if you looked at my notes, you'd be like, that doesn't make any sense to me. You know, there's, <laughs> there's diagrams and all kinds of horseshit, but I don't know where it's going to go. I have a, I have an idea of how things are structured at this moment, but mm -hmm. Like Lavender Blues was pretty much that's that was just us live just fucking around and and out of all the jams we did I'm like that one should, we shouldn't touch I tried to mess with it and and I, I stripped my stuff and sat here and we recorded things and it just didn't feel right to fuck with but this one felt like like you you get ideas and they kind of rise to the surface but then after the fact you can kind of you know hindsight's twenty twenty go back and go you know I could have executed that better or maybe I could change a key here move this here so there's it's kind of a cool way of of rethinking a jam, you know. Mm -hmm. And how much, so this is all from this session in 2019. This is just, Yeah, just those three days. And, and there's still leftover shit. There's still stuff that we're, I don't know what to do with. It's how crazy. much? Um, so once this full length comes out, so you got Lavender Blues and then the full length, there's two more jams with Chris Goss that, that I, I, we could probably do some shit with. And then there's probably about, God, there's probably like three more jams that that are cool but they're not as like open to changes you know like we'll jam mm -hmm. on a riff for like three minutes and maybe have another part and be like oh those are cool we'll see what happens but i got stuff from the session we did with the thing that um uh, with the four that you did for dying on the mountain with nick oliveri yeah there's jams from that there's like three or four that we haven't even touched either so it's it's crazy it's a productive time and it's not it, it's not really forced we just but get in at 10 in the morning, start playing until about 10 at night, you know? I don't even think, those dudes are funny. I don't remember breaking for to eat. <laughs> I remember going like, you guys want me to go get some food or anything? They're like, no, we're good. I'm like, don't you guys fucking eat? This is crazy. <laughs> right. And but yeah, there's a lot of music going on. So we're thinking about doing that um, again this year. You know, things things seem to be mellowing out, hopefully. So, you know, I mean, if, if bands are on tour and shows are happening, yeah, we'll, we'll get back in the studio and go to the same spot in November. It's a good time of year to go out there and, and just load up the, you know, stockpile riffs and ideas. It's fun to, to have that. And that, that was really therapeutic for me to, to dig into it around 2020 because 2020 was so fucked to be right. like, oh, I can listen to hours and hours of this stuff and just start mapping it and focus my concentration on something positive, which mm -hmm. is yeah, no, I mean, I would think that's that's kind of the perfect pandemic project, right? You're, you're yeah, yeah, isolated in that space. Go, yeah, no, yeah, that makes yeah, a lot of sense. Yeah, it just gives you these like little fucking carrots that are dangling, and little, you know, just like oh, oh, someone sends me a track back, and I get to check it out. I'm like, oh, rad! You know, it's like little Christmas presents and shit, like year round. So right. that that was very, very much needed in 2020 for sure. 
how much is the lineup solidified as as you, Bill, Gary, and Tony sort of? I mean, that, I mean yeah, that's it. That's it. I don't, I don't really yeah. see. I mean, unless we get someone to come in and do key, like, you know, um, the, the keyboard player from Opus. I think I've toured with him. I should know how to say his name. Pear. 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 Yeah, I mean, I've toured with him for like seven weeks back in the 90s. I should remember how to say his name. <laughs> I don't want to fuck it up. But yeah, I mean, he, he's been on all of them. So, you know, I could maybe imagine something like that. But yeah, it's the, the it's going to be the us four. So. Mm -hmm. I, that, yeah, no. Pear is, uh, I end up writing about Pear, Pear Vyberg so much. Yeah. Just, just like, the, it, it's almost embarrassing because it's like it's like oh and by the way you know because i've started to notice it now right that like he's yeah. just on everything he's on every, yeah. he's on everybody's everything i was writing about a record last week and it was just like oh and this has pear on it and then something else came out and it was like oh there he is again and and you know you're putting up two posts about the same dude in one day it's I yeah kinda, you, all you do is just put like just type p and your computer's like there it is that's it it's yeah. like yeah autofill it's like i'm trying not to stalk the guy you know but, <laughs> it's hard not to but, i yeah. stalk him Shit, I mean, every, time, every time we have music i'm like hey dude would you mind you know he's got the track right now so hopefully he sees this and goes oh yeah i should probably dig into that but yeah i mean the the first time i sent him stuff for this project and what he sent back i was just like whoa like he fucking uh, yeah I, I i knew it would be good but some of the shit was like the chords were really weird because i'm a jazz nerd and shit so there was like some weird jazz chords in there and he was just like oh it's that oh yeah you're doing that and i'm like okay sorry <laughs> <laughs> crazy yeah he's really talented and and you know plays all kinds of instruments and shit we toured with him we made you toured with him when he was in spiritual beggars mm -hmm. in like the late 90s we shared a bus for like seven weeks and that, that was my first really long tour of europe mm -hmm. um but yeah, I mean, I've been running into him ever since. Whenever we're in, in Sweden, he comes out and we hang for a little bit. So that's always cool. That's awesome. Yeah. You, uh, you've released two tracks so far. Le Dieu, Le Dieu, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and Murder Clip, right? Mm -hmm. and, you, and you were talking, uh, I saw the quote that came out with, with uh, Murder Clip, I think it was. And you were kind of talking about Gary playing in open tunings. As yeah. opposed to as opposed to your style and sort of freeing yourself up headspace wise to do that. Can you talk a little bit about what that difference is? Because again, not a guitar nerd. Um, how would can you kind of explain that to me as the ultimate dumb layman? No, no. I mean, if you don't play the guitar, it's kind of hard to see. But like, like so, I teach all day in this chair, so I have everything accessible. Okay, but like, like no, that I was that, that was very part. natural. What you just <laughs> did. <laughs> By the way, thanks for yeah. having me. That no, I'll, we'll get that later. I'll play. No, um, I have a tech just on standby in my garage. No, legit. Yeah, so like if um, there's shapes on the guitar that that most guitar players see, it's called like the neck lights up. So if you know what key you're in, you know where you can go, right? Okay. So the second you change the tuning on all these strings, like I guess I don't need the guitar for this example, but the second you change the tuning for all these strings, all those shapes are just gone. It's like kryptonite. Like I don't fucking know what I'm doing at that point. You know? Okay. So Gary's, he's constantly changing tunings. And I used to, when we first started jamming, I'd be like, what is that tuning? And I'd go there too. And then I just learned to give a fuck up. Like, don't do that. Cause what it does is it handicaps what I'm used to doing. And so I, I would just listen to what he's doing and then try to find the shape that goes with what he's doing. Mm. And then in my nerd brain, I go, oh, that shape is an E Phrygian scale. You know, so it's like, it all just kind of, then the shit lights up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like you're kind of playing like, like you get it's like little kids that have like you know you're putting a square thing in a round hole. Oh, it doesn't fit. Oh, that right. fits. And then right. once you figure out what a little piece fits, if you know what you're doing, then oh, if this fits and this fits, this fits, and then everything lights up, and then you could start jamming. So that's kind of what I do with him. I you know I don't want to think about what notes he's playing or anything. I just kind of try to find out what he's doing in my tuning. And it's, it's usually not the same thing. It's just something that complements what he's doing. I don't want to figure out exactly what he's doing. I want to like add something on top. It's like layer shit, you know? Right. Compliment. So yeah. 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 So that's how that works. And except for murder clip, um, I was pretty much doing the same shit he was doing. Well, no, that's not true. Never mind. I'm thinking about it. Yeah. It was, it was a lot different. <laughs> yeah. But I think that sounds like it, it just sounds bigger when, when you do shit like that. Um, like I learned from, uh, 
I, I interviewed Wayne Kramer from from MC5 a while mm -hmm. back, and he was showing me some shit like, oh, I played this, and the other guitar player played this. And, and it's simple things of taking something and flipping it over or just doing a different shape. And I started using that stuff with Fumanchu after that. I was like, oh, shit, that's rad. You know, that's, that's safe territory. So, <laughs> you know, that, that kind of – like if one, guy, if one guy's playing like – like it, like an A and an E, then the other guy can play E and A. That Got simple it. shit like that, you know what yeah. I mean? So those are all cool little tricks. But with with what Gary does, I don't. It, it's weird the way he plays the guitar, but it's super unique and rad. So I, I don't, I don't try to figure it out note for note. I just add shit to it. Mm -hmm. And how much of that is sort of the? I mean, at least at least for you, is kind of the heart of the project. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, he, he's really good at planting seeds and then, you know, or just throwing like jigsaw puzzle shit, just throwing it all on the table and going, here you go, bro. <laughs> and I'm going to be like, well, wait, what, this one, that's how I did Vision Beyond Horizon is we, we jammed just me and him mm -hmm. and for, you know, like two hours and I recorded it and then like a total fucking nerd, I went home and put it into these categories like, like these songs are at this tempo or these riff ideas are at this tempo and then these riff ideas are in this key. And then I would be like, Oh, so then these two should go together. You know, this one from one o'clock and this one from four o'clock should go together. Right. And so it's, it's total jigsaw puzzle shit because he'll just throw the raddest shit at you. And then you got to go, well, wait, what the fuck is it? What are we doing? <laughs> you know? And so that's, that's how vision beyond horizon came around. It was just jigsaw puzzle shit. But I like the jamming aspect too of it where it, we don't know where it's going to go and it can kind of go all different places. Mm -hmm. and, okay. and the long morrow, this, this side long jam that's, that's coming. Where does that go? Um, it starts, <laughs> I mean, it starts pretty Pink Floydy and then, and then it gets heavy. And then it then it gets a little mellower, and then then it turns into a, a bunch of fucking guitar like conversational things, you know, like this guy does this for a few bars, that guy does this. Um, it, it it goes to a lot of places. It gets really heavy. It gets really mellow. It gets really melodic. So it's it, yeah. And I don't know if I I don't have the folder here. I'd show you the timeline. I'm such a nerd with the timeline, but yeah, I, I constantly change it and. and and tweak it a little bit right now it's it's 25 minutes it'll probably be about 18 minutes because okay. there's some parts where you know it doesn't need to be that long but once we start adding stuff and people contribute maybe maybe it will stay i don't know it has to fit on one side yeah 25 minutes is pushing that yeah that's like a, yeah that's that, <laughs> yeah. And it'll start to sound shitty like the longer it gets but you could on on the digital side of things i was listening to the original mm -hmm. thing and being like oh we could just release the original raw jam Mm -hmm. with all the flaws or whatever and then be like here's what it became you know which could be kind of cool to do it that way but yeah it goes it goes all over the place i mean if you've listened to our other re releases there's there's a lot of different things going on as far as styles are concerned so it's like you know we kind of borrow from a lot of different shit in, in that one especially yeah it'll, it'll be really cool i'm pretty nice. stoked on it and it, it helps me to to stay healthy in the sense that like it's it's 25 minutes and i do my best thinking about shit like that if i'm like running you know what i mean mm, so i'll put mm -hmm. it on and fucking go run like a total nerd but you know i used to be like oh i'm gonna stay up and crack beers and really analyze this shit and and it's like one in the morning rolls around and i gotta get up at six and it's just not that doesn't really work for me anymore so right. it was either one or the other but yeah that, that's been pretty cool especially during a pandemic to to ease my mind and just run around and listen to that shit if you're still working on that, how much of the album is done? Um, so three songs are completely done. Like okay. we're going to release uh, the one that's like kind of the the two songs in, in uh, off the off the last EP. That's not so cohesive song. Mm -hmm. We're going to release that one at the end of the month. Okay. Uh, and then then there's two more uh, for that side for side two, and then the long morrow. So the the long morrow is about I would say. 70 percent done mm -hmm. you know it's pretty fleshed out i've worked on it a lot over the past couple of months and uh you just need to add people you know right now it's kind of just like the icing on the cake we're just adding people 
it's almost like mixed. I mean, you know, we're going to add vocals and guitar and stuff, but everything's kind of in its place and the tones are all there and stuff. Um, there's two songs that have pretty strong front halves that we need to organize the back half, but that shouldn't be a problem. That's pretty easy. Um, and you're looking at October to release the whole thing. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> I mean, we'll see. I, I, I don't know what what the timeline is on that but i'm shooting for october yeah because i mean okay. what, what are we in now may may so end of may we do the third one june the fourth song july the fifth song that should be all right it's all i mean it's all a matter of like pressing plants at this point you know what i mean it's kind of hard yeah. to, that was kind of my question is is i mean if you yeah. get everything how much lead time before you're stuck i, I think that uh, shit now that i think about it, it's like august september yeah i mean if we turn it in at the the end of july or beginning of august i think we should be okay for october hopefully i don't know we're kind of at the mercy of that shit at this yeah. point Every, everybody everybody is. is yeah is uh is heavy psych sounds gonna put it out yeah i'm talking to them right now about that okay. so uh i just was looking over the contract like right before this call hmm. so yeah it looks like it's it'll be them and they i mean they've got a pretty they, they have good pull for that kind of shit you know what I mean? If it was just me doing it myself, then they would be like, nah, you're fucking seventh month waiting list or whatever. But yeah, they 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 already have their foot in the door for that shit, so that should be pretty good. Fortunate. All right. Yeah. All right. So fall is doable. I'm I'm I hope so. Yeah, yeah. yeah fall, yeah. That's yeah. Good. I think I think it'll be good. I That's think good. it'll be good. And uh Fu Manchu was was recently in the studio, of course, all the thirtieth anniversary plans for the band shit canned. Uh, like every <laughs> like 30, everybody's everything and 31st too and <laughs> 31st like 32nd anniversary yeah well, so well that's my question is do you do a 30th anniversary tour in 2022 or does Fu Manchu wait for the 35th anniversary no no we'll, we'll be out on the road we're already looking at, at a lot of dates for 2022 okay I think there, there's like a states run there's two states runs and two Europe runs that, that we're kind of mapping out um but yeah, I don't know. I still want to do like, I want to celebrate the anniversary of it. I mean, we're going to do a bunch of like deep cuts or, you know, do a couple of tunes off each record in order. We were trying to think about a bunch of shit that we could do for that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I mean, the world got put on hold, so yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. I'll be down to just put 30 and cross it out and just write a two in the poster. <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck it. It's fine. Yeah. And, uh, and the recording, it was, three EPs originally how many yeah so so we're, we just did our second one so we did we did okay. the, the, the one came EP. out I know the one came, yeah yeah you got it, one the, you got you got one take it to the streets for the Doobie yeah. Brothers and then yeah this one's got a cover and two originals and then we got another one that'll be a cover and two originals and then uh, I mean we'll probably start writing for a full length pretty soon I'd imagine because the covers the the, all, the next record's almost like the cover's already done we need to record it but we have it Wait, do we? I know we just we just did record it. Yeah. Shit, we did the drums and the bass. I need to do my shit, but I've been doing all my stuff in this chair, so it's rad. I can do it whenever the fuck. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this one hopefully will be out around uh, summer for for this ten inch with the cover okay. and the two originals and yeah, it's rad. I mean, I, I'm stoked because it's the first time when I got to sit here and, and do guitars at home, which is to me it's just so fun to take my time and really think about shit and not you know i'm not paying for studio time and i could do like here's 10 ideas so you guys mm. whatever you want to choose here's like something that's way out of left field or here's something you know and so i was wasn't really like holding back anything it was just like here's here's everything whereas before i would go into the studio and, and be like okay i gotta record guitars then i gotta split and pick up my kit you know what i mean so like this way is it was rad and it, it was perfect because my wife went out of town with the kid for like four days which i've never experienced that <laughs> ever mm -hmm. you know, i'm trying to think like in my, i'm 43 i've never been left home alone for four days in my entire life <laughs> ever <laughs> you know what i mean i mean moved out of my yeah. folks house when i was 19 going on tour you're never alone i've always had like roommates then moving in with my wife in my 20s and shit and I was like, whoa. So I had four days to sit here and really kind of like think about stuff and try out different amps and metal and everything. It was really fun. I think it turned out awesome. I can't wait for people to hear it. That's, that's an interesting, I mean, f four days, huh? That's the, that's, 
Okay. My wife went to, uh, when we, we moved, we moved to Massachusetts in like 2013. And then in 2014, we moved again in Massachusetts. And when we moved into that second place, my wife, like the weekend we moved, uh, went to Greece for a month. Oh, wow. So I had the whole, that whole first, and this is before we had, had our kid or anything. Yeah. So I had that whole first, first month in like this new spot to myself. And of course, you know, I spent the entire time unpacking boxes as you do, but, uh, but uh, that was, that was, the, you know, that was the longest I've ever like. Yeah. Done anything pretty, pretty it, was, it, was, it was pretty insane. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I missed them. Don't get me wrong. I wasn't like, Woo, I hope they don't yeah, no, <laughs> like, no, of course. I totally not. Missed them. Of course. Of it course. was, it was just good. It was good timing because I had, I, I had four days to really sit in here and just put pedals everywhere and really, you know, mess around with shit. I mean, the other end of that is you can get, right. You can get so caught up in the, in, in doing things where you're like trying a hundred different things and then yeah. maybe the second one was really good. Well, right? yeah, I have a pretty good knack for just knowing, like, you can, I can almost tell, like if I'm playing it and I'm like, this is the one I already, I can already tell you, you know, mm -hmm. I would just take different approaches and be like, here's something that's like really aggressive or something with more melodic, whatever. But yeah, I can usually tell, even then I could be like, it's probably going to be that one, you know? <laughs> Um, it's weird. You feel it like if you're playing, it'll be like coming behind you and be like, and here it is. And you're like, oh shit, you're right. There it is. And we're done. <laughs> yeah, it's it's one of those things. It, it's like kind of an old Thelonious Monk thing that he would do like three takes. And, and if it didn't come out of those three takes, he'd be like, fuck it. Then, that, then fuck that song. Come over it. And it would usually be the first take. And I'd be like, we should have just kept the first one. <laughs> I like I like to work that way. That's that. Well, that's a far cry from carving a song out of uh that being said yeah there's, there's a different way of doing it but but i do I, like each each part of that that long jam there's there's like five sections or movements whatever right so like i would go in and, and fuck with one section and then you would be like okay that's it i know i know that's the part now so it's like it's almost like five songs but they're all they kind of all connect and they all you know it's like seamless so <laughs> do you at all you know, November 2019 was a year and a half ago, right? Yeah, Thanks. year year and a half ago. <laughs> it's been a while, yeah. Right. It's, it's, of course, 2020 was three years long, so whatever. <laughs> but, you know, having done that and having worked with this material and, and sort of lived with these jams for so long, are you in a, are you in a place where kind of you hear big scenic nowhere songs in your head just kind of jamming out riffing out by yourself do you have do you have ideas for for what big scenic nowhere will do yeah totally yeah i mean i i, I look at riffs like it's just I, I just want to stockpile them i've got so many that i'll go back to and be like oh shit that one could be cool it's weird like i was doing this this project um sun and sail club a while back which i think you did a review on with i did yep first one was with scott reader from kaya i think we did an interview about it I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's been a while on that. Yeah, yeah, it was a long time. So we did two two releases. One was that all the guitars were done with a vocoder, or on the sorry, all mm -hmm. the vocals were done with a vocoder mm -hmm. through the guitar. And then the second one had Tony Adolescent from that Adolescence on vocals. And so I sat down to write the third one, and um, I just I had I, I couldn't get that level of like I have to be like anxious or you know I have to like I have to be going through some shit to write some like that music is so angry it's very weird. tense yeah yeah even the, like the first one my wife was like i'm pregnant and i was like shit i better make a fucking record you know what i mean and you can kind of hear it in that record There's, i'm just throwing riffs and i'm like fuck i don't need a singer i'll use a vocoder i don't have time for that shit fucking whatever right. <laughs> and it's like it is totally like a panic situation you uh -huh. know and then uh it, yeah and then she she wasn't actually pregnant but then when she did get pregnant uh that's the second one and i was like okay here fuck here's a bunch of shit again so when I went to go write the third one, I couldn't, I just didn't have that level of anxiety. So I was writing really mellow shit. I didn't know where it was gonna go. I don't know what it would, but I'd stockpile it. And so a lot of that stuff is what you hear on uh, Vision Beyond Horizon. There's a song called Hidden Wall that was written for Sun and Sail Club. There's a song on there called En Las Sombras that Alan, I'm probably saying it wrong, Alan Johannes sings on that was written for Sun and Sail Club. So I had all these things ready to go and then Warriors, but there's another song in there that was written for Sun and Club. And then when 
Gary and Tony kind of reached out to me almost at the same time. And they were like, oh yeah, we should, we should jam or I was sending Tony stuff to sing on the mellow stuff. Actually, I reached out to Tony. I'm like, yeah, you got, you should sing on this. You know, I don't know what to do with any of this shit. And then Gary reached out and said, we should jam. And I'm like, well, I'm already jammed with Tony. I got all this, these t songs ready to go. Check them out. And he's like, fuck, those are rad. I'll play on those. So yeah, it was kind of already in the works in a weird way, you know, mm -hmm. but I'll, I'll come in here and it depends on the mood. Like I'll sit here and be like, Oh fuck, here's like 10 Fumichi riffs or here's Sun and Cell Club things or here's Big Scenic Nowhere. Some stuff that I just sit in here and, and play jazz guitar and, to like two in the morning so i don't you know i don't know what what come what's coming but i just follow it yeah as a uh, as a student of guitar what are you excited by right now like what are you what are you nerding out on guitar wise right now well i mean because of 2020 i started taking lessons again and i haven't had a guitar lesson since high school you know when okay. i'm 43 there's a guy named john stowell who he's a jazz guy that I've been watching on YouTube for probably like three years. And uh, the way he plays is really kind of like when he wants to get really eerie, it, it gets like, like kind of heavy. You're like, Jesus, dude, like you're making me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> and then, and then he'll play something really pretty and you're like, Oh, that's beautiful. That's be Oh fuck. That's eerie again. It's, he's really good at, at twisting your ear and your head. Mm -hmm. And and some some jazz guys I can watch him and go oh yeah I see he's using that oh that's a cool trick whatever and then this dude I was like I don't know what the fuck I don't know where he's coming from and and it, it's it's super nerdy so I, I reached out to him and yeah I've, I've taken like twenty two twenty three lessons from him since since I started and uh, it's been rad it's I got one tomorrow you know and and it's it's just been really eye opening and cool so he'll. He'll be like, oh, yeah, you, that thing you do here, just fucking move it down here and do it over this chord. And, I'll, and then I sit in here all night and just be like, oh, this is rad. It sounds, it's shit that I was, I didn't understand before. Mm -hmm. And teaching guitar for a living, it's kind of weird because I got to figure out songs for people all day long. But when I watch that guy specifically, I'm like, I don't even know where to start with that dude. Like, it's crazy. Hmm. He's really good. So, yeah, that's been good. I've been geeking out on that a lot. Um, but yeah, I haven't really bought like any new music. I bought, what's that band? Black Mountain. You've probably heard of them. Like yep. that, that album four, I just bought Because every time I'd hear that record, I would be like, I would hear little snippets of it. And I'd be like, fuck, that's insane. I want to do that. <laughs> I, I want to use that fucking tone. And I got like kind of upset about it. Like I was like, you know, like, fuck, man. <laughs> I'm taking all these, all these ideas that I wanted to do and shit, you know? Um, right. So I bought that. You know, and it's really good. I, it, I had to just kind of roll over and be like, fuck it. Right. Just here, I'm, I'm ready to give up and check it out. But it's, I, I like it a lot. That was really cool. Yeah. You know, like, stupid good jerks. Yeah. I know. No, I yeah. totally like that. When I hear when I hear music that's really good, I'm like, fuck those guys. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And then I then I hear it and I'm like, okay, it's, it's good. It takes me a while to roll over and, and buy it and dig into it. I really liked the, um, that elder record that, that came out on post wax mm -hmm. with uh i listened to that a lot that one that one's fucking rad is it the silver and gold sessions oh, yeah gold and silver yep gold and silver yeah that one's that one's killer but i don't know i i teach all day so i don't really like get off work and like throw on old kiss records and shit like i'll do that on the weekends but right I don't, yeah I, I get off work and i just kind of want to just want silence so. <laughs> yeah that's a long. i mean that's a long day of guitar stuff unless though i get really nerdy and sit in here and write a bunch of riffs and then i'll listen to him go oh fuck i forgot about that one that one's cool <laughs> I, I listen to my own shit more than anything which it sounds pretty like shitty to say but it's like i just i, I like being busy with projects so i like to juggle shit and and you kind of have to keep listening to to what you're doing right. to to make sure you know you're, you you want to put your stamp on it to do anything yep. with it. Yeah. Yeah. But my tastes are all over the place. So it just, it all depends. Mm -hmm. And, uh, what, okay. So, so big scenic nowhere, maybe getting together in November, Fu Manchu, probably touring in 2022. Where does your head go from, and Fu Manchu recording again this summer? um we gotta start we, we we gotta start writing for that 30p like we've got the basic tracks for the cover but we gotta write two more originals so okay i'm, I'm, I'm assuming i mean if it's may we start now yeah probably by like august I, I bet we'd be in the studio again are you are you guys getting together at this point to write yeah well not 
not this week. Next week we get together to do photos for the ten inch. Mm. Um, but yeah, we were getting together. We, you know, it would with Southern California. It was like I think it was like around June last year. It was like okay, we could probably get together and, and with masks and it'll be sort of safe and we'll just feel it. And then, and then Southern California just fucking around January was just like awful. So we didn't, we didn't get together again until February, March. I don't remember. We only got together like five, six times in the past 15 months. But, you know, now it, we could get together on a weekly basis now and it'll be fine. So mm-hmm. that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, yeah. It's, it's preferable, Which, I would think. Yeah, I mean, it's, I it's been such a part of my routine for f- fucking 30 years. Or something, yeah. you know? I mean, not that long. I've been in since 97. But yeah, I mean, we've been practicing every Thursday since like 1997. Yeah. You know? And so it was weird to not have that on Thursdays. I would be like, oh, I don't have to drive today. I could just chill and lounge around. But then I, I would be like, well, fuck, I, I want to rock. You know? Right, right. <laughs> Get a little, little itchy after a while, I would think. After yeah. about two weeks, I was like, okay, I'm good now. Let's, let's fucking rock. But yeah, it, it'll be good to get back in the swing of things every Thursday. It's been Fu Manchu Day forever. So. <laughs> I, you know what? I, I will now think of Thursday as Fu Manchu Day. So Please, thank, yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. yeah, just imagine from 11 to 2, we're fucking practicing something. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and of course, you do playthisriff.com. Uh, and have for a, a while now. Uh, yeah. What's coming up? Anyone Anyone you want to plug, play this riff-wise? I have a bunch of footage that I'm sitting on that I really need to, to dig into. Like, I started play this riff to, to kind of advertise that, that I teach. You know, I'm like, oh, I can start this website, get some traffic, and then I'll put, like, an ad on the side. Like, yeah, I teach Skype lessons. And it, I mean, it's gone really well because I don't have time. I teach a lot now, you know? Yeah. But I need to start editing some stuff because I'm sitting on a lot of MC5. I'm sitting on a lot of like uh, Municipal Ways, Toxic Holocaust, Nashville Pussy. I think there's some more Danko Jones I can add. Speed Dealer. Um, fuck, there's there's a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I really need to go in, into the hard drive and go, oh, shit. I got stuff from like 2009 I haven't gotten around to. It's kind of the same thing as, as Big Scenic Nowhere in the sense that you just sh- – like record shit and then archive it and then slowly chip away at it and kind of, you know, do it. So, yeah, I mean, every time I interview a band for that site, there's always leftover stuff that I got I to gotta put up there. Hmm. Um, but that's been cool. And I feel like that website has been, um, like, I had Gary from Yanni Man on the site and shortly afterwards he's like, oh, we should jam. Tony Reed sent me shit for the site and I was like, oh, we should jam. So it's been, you know, these cool little avenues that, that um, Daniel from Voivod was on the site. And so mm-hmm. I had his email. I'm like, hey, dude, you should do a solo on our thing. And he got back to me. It's been cool. Yeah, it's been a really good networking thing, oddly enough. Hey, man, if it and, works. And I get to interview, like, people that I admired and people that I grew up listening to and just sit in a room with them with a camera and watch them play riffs, like, at me that I've been listening to for forever. Like, some of it trips me out. I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> Like going to Greg's house from the Circle Jerks and just sitting there and filming him. He's just playing Circle Jerk shit at me for like two hours. I'm like, what? This is, crazy. <laughs> this is so weird that this is like a, a kind of a job, you know? Right. <laughs> so yeah, you, it, you could do this. Yes. It's been good. Yeah, it's been it's been fun. So I'm looking forward to you know when shit opens up again fully to, to interview people in person and stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't have anything in the books right now, so we'll see. I gotta say, uh, you know mentioned daniel from voivod that guy is is one of the most joyful guitar players i have ever seen on a stage it's because he's fucking better than all of us <laughs> <laughs> dude he's so he's so good yeah no he's great and i mean to, to figure out the voivod shit is gnarly enough you yeah know? yeah and then he sells the tab book at the merch booth and he's like fucking done all the software to figure out how to put the drums in and it's just crazy like, I think he teaches, like, university level in, like, Montreal or something. But I was watching a video of him the other day playing, like, a John Schofield solo or something, some jazz thing that was, like, five minutes long, and he'd memorized the entire thing. He wasn't reading the music. He was just kind of just jamming out, looking around, playing along with it. And I'm like, mm-hmm. how do you do that? <laughs> I don't even know how to do that. Right. Yeah. He's he's insanely good. He, he, he should, I don't know. Everybody should know how good that guy is. It's crazy. <laughs> He's, yeah, 
He's a uh, he's a lot of fun to to watch yeah. uh, constantly. Yeah, I've never seen Voivod. I'd, I'd love to go see him play. I feel like when when things open back up here in San Diego, I'll I'll fucking go to a show on Wednesday. Yeah, you know, this point yeah. like before I I get home from tour and I'm like I don't want to go to a club and smell the piss and now I'm like I'll smell the piss. <laughs> 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 I'll smell the beer in the piss. That's cool. Right. Whatever yeah. you got. I'll, yeah. Yeah. I'll go see bands I don't even give a fuck about. I'll be like, whatever. I'll, I'll go check it out. So. <laughs> right. You never know. Voivod might show up. Yeah. Could happen. Yeah. Fuck. I mean, they, yeah, they, they were here. Every time I interview someone for Play This Riff, they're like, you coming to the show? And I'm like, totally, man. And then I get home and I start geeking out on the footage. And then I'm like, fuck. They're like, oh, ah. you know what I mean? I, I don't really stick around. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will. <laughs> <laughs> I will from now. Right. Lesson learned. Lesson learned. Yeah. Uh, Bob, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop hitting. Rec- I'm gonna stop the recording right there. So before yeah. I do, thank you. That oh, was much thank appreciated. You, Hang on one second.